Hi, I'm Mike Merritt, and in this video, we'll discuss the concept of interaction in a linear regression model. We'll examine the concept of interaction and how this is interpreted for two categorical variables with two levels each. Our example will consist of an outcome or dependent variable of the length of stay in hospital, an explanatory or independent variable of whether or not the individual smokes recorded as yes or no, and an explanatory or independent variable of whether or not the individual has regularly been exposed to asbestos, recorded as yes or no. Both of these variables will have no as the reference category. Now let's suppose that the data looked as follows. The x-axis shows whether or not they've been exposed to asbestos, and the plotting characters N or S, colored using blue or red, indicate a non-smoker and a smoker respectively. The lines added into this plot show the mean length of stay for each of the four groups formed by the smoking variable and the asbestos exposure variable. In this plot, we can see that the effect of asbestos exposure and the effect of smoking interact. That is, the effect of asbestos exposure on the length of stay is dependent on smoking and vice versa. Let's talk about why I'm saying that this plot displays the concept of interaction. Looking at this plot, we can see that the effect of smoking on the mean length of stay is different for those who are not exposed to asbestos and for those who are exposed to asbestos. In other words, the effect of smoking depends on whether or not they've been exposed to asbestos. We can also see that the effect of exposure on the length of stay depends on whether or not they smoke. Here, we can see the effect of exposure to asbestos for non-smokers, and here we can see the effect of exposure to asbestos for a smoker. The effect of asbestos exposure is different depending on whether or not they smoke. These can all be stated in a few different ways. We could say that the effect of asbestos exposure and the effect of smoking interact. We could also say that the effect of smoking depends on asbestos exposure and vice versa, or that the effect of smoking is modified by asbestos exposure and vice versa. Let's take a look at this numerically. Here we've added in the mean for each of these four groups. Suppose that the fitted regression model is as shown here. Recall that the smoking indicator equals 1 if they smoke and the asbestos exposure indicator equals 1 if they've been exposed. The 23.1 is the interaction term. We can think of this as capturing the change in the smoking effect if someone has been exposed to asbestos, or we can think of this as the change in the asbestos exposure effect if someone smokes. The intercept term of 21.5 tells us the mean length of stay for the reference group, that is, for the non-smokers who are not exposed to asbestos. The 11.1 .1 is the smoking effect for someone not exposed to asbestos. And the 23.1 is the change in the smoking effect for someone who has been exposed to asbestos. So, for someone who has been exposed to asbestos, the smoking effect is 11.1 plus 23.1, which is 34.2. For individuals who have been exposed to asbestos, we expect the smoker to have an increase in the mean length of stay of 34.2 days relative to the non-smokers. To state that again, for those who are not exposed to asbestos, we expect mean length of stay to increase by 11.1 .1 days for a smoker relative to a non-smoker. And for those who have been exposed to asbestos, we expect the mean length of stay to increase by 34.2 for a smoker relative to a non-smoker. The effect of smoking on the length of stay is much larger for those who have been exposed to asbestos than those who have not. Now, let's look at this again, but from the perspective of the effect of exposure to asbestos. Recall that the intercept of 21.5 is the mean length of stay for a non-smoker who is not exposed to asbestos. The 14.6 is the effect of exposure to asbestos for a non-smoker. And the 23.1 is the change in the effect of asbestos exposure for those who do smoke. So for someone who smokes, the effect of asbestos exposure is 14.6 plus 23.1, which is 37.7. In other words, for individuals who smoke, we expect that those who have been exposed to asbestos have an increase of 37.7 days in length of stay 
relative to those who have not been exposed to asbestos. To state that again, for those who do not smoke, we expect asbestos exposure to increase the mean length of stay by 14.6 days. And for those who do smoke, we expect asbestos exposure to increase the mean length of stay by 37.7 days. The effect of asbestos exposure is different for those who smoke and for those who do not, and it ends up being much more harsh of an effect for those who do smoke. For the sake of comparing and contrasting, let's take a quick look at what a model that does not include interaction would look like. No interaction suggests that the effect of smoking is the same for those who are exposed to asbestos and those who are not. No interaction also suggests that the effect of asbestos exposure is the same for smokers and for non-smokers. This is the same concept as parallel lines discussed in previous videos. As we noted there, in order to include an interaction term in our model, the interaction term should satisfy a few things. First, it should make sense conceptually. That is, it should be reasonable to believe that the effect of asbestos exposure would be different for smokers and for non-smokers. The interaction term should also be statistically significant, and this can be judged by the p-value of the interaction term, confidence interval, or other forms of significant tests. In following videos, we'll continue to build up our understanding of linear regression models. Thanks for watching this video, and make sure to check out my other instructional videos.